How are you, Lee? Hi, Gary. You good? Hi, good. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Good stuff. Yeah, it's good to have you on. Thank you for um, thank you for taking time out of your day to do this. I'm, I'm sure that, well, I know that there's a, a number of business owners in, in the, the Mind Gym community and uh, there's a number of people who will be looking forward to hearing what you've got to say in terms of the... Uh, the, the kind of climate that we're in at the moment and um, what, uh, you know, what little tips that people can take forward just to help them to navigate this period and hopefully come out of it stronger on the other side, you know? Yeah, definitely. T- give us a, a, a brief um, intro then just to and introduce yourself and um, just for anybody that doesn't know you already and also what kind of took you into what you're doing now. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, name's Lee, and I run a business called Outlaw Social. That's um, my main business, and predominantly what we do is we are a marketing agency based in Edinburgh, and we are what I would call multidiscipline. So, we offer a full suite of services to business owners, but what we really focus on and where we add the most value is that we're solution-led. So, we get in at strategy level to help business owners identify where their biggest opportunities are with their marketing. And I guess we're, we're almost, if you think of a spider web, um, we help the business owners join the dots between their different marketing um, uh, items that they're doing. So be that you know social media, email marketing, paid advertising, we help them join the dots with them so that they can get towards some sort of return on investment. <coughs> Hi. Yeah, that's that's what we do. I, I do have a, another business that I'm managing director of, and that's called Medialiciously. Um, kind of fits quite well with what we do at Outlaw, but that's a um, video production agency for food and drinks brands. Yeah, that's and, and I, um, I, I'm, I'm aware of that. Because I'd spoken to Mo. Ah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I've and I've and I've met Tal. Brilliant. Um, just through a a bit of filming that was done recently at a school that I was working at. Um. So yeah, yeah. And these guys are they are they are they part of um Media Liciously or? Yeah, yeah. So they're my t- two business partners. Um. Yeah. So. As you'll know, a good team to to be involved with. Very much so. Very much so. Um, yeah. Well, that's great. That's, uh, thank you for the introduction. And um, I guess the yeah, let's let's dive in. Um, just given your own, you know, expertise and um, you know what what things that you think are, are most important for business owners to hear right now. Um, and obviously, you've provided the. Um, the kind of the, the graphics here, but you know, bring those to life for people so that we can get a real sense of um, things that people might want to consider. Sure, absolutely. Is it useful for me to share my screen and bring those up? Yeah, why not? Yeah, Shall we go absolutely. for that. Yeah, yeah um, let's do that. Okay, fantastic. Um, just bear with me. This will be the first time I've done this, so. Uh, <laughs> Um, it should hopefully work. That should bring the the screen up. It has. It has. Perfect. Fantastic. Um, so I, I guess I'll I'll set the scene a little bit with these these slides. Um, so over the past couple of weeks, we've, as you'll probably have guessed, we've been busy trying to help business owners navigate the situation, which is completely new. Um, and a lot of that has been focused around how do we minimize the impact just now? So how do we adapt and react to the situation that has now become a reality, which has really hit us by surprise? Um, and that's been a combination of um, mainly focused around um, should the business be marketing? Um, Should they be selling in this climate? What type of content do consumers want to hear? And um, things like policy statements and, you know, putting policies out on their social media channels or their websites 
and just kind of helping them navigate it, particularly around the tone of voice piece, because business owners, rightly so, are quite um, they're quite worried and fearful about how people will perceive marketing just now. Um, even though it's really crucial at the moment that businesses keep trading if they can and if they can do so legally, um, following government guidelines and stuff, and also start to prepare for the future. Um, so we created these sl slides, which I've called Bounce Back, and the, the ideas within the slides are all about how businesses can use their marketing and also use their time in the most efficient way to try and prepare so that once this crisis starts to taper off and pass, their, their business is in a position to maximize how quickly they can get back to back to normal or or maybe not even back to normal but how they can get back to their new normal yeah. um yeah and i guess um i came across uh probably worth mentioning and quite interesting um i mentioned it on a call i was on earlier um we are we are keeping our eyes and ears open to what's what's going on in the news because it's really important for us to make sure that the content that's going out on our the businesses we work with on their uh, platforms that it's relevant and that it's up to date with government guidelines and news and stuff like that so we um we got a survey into our inbox yesterday which um a friend shared with me uh, it was by a, a company called census wide and it was on how people are responding to brands during the crisis uh, and some of the stats were quite interesting and it'll be, I think, quite useful for businesses to know. So I'll just read them off very quickly, if that's OK. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, so the first one was 61% of people strongly agree that they care about how brands are behaving during COVID-19. 58% mm -hmm. um, agree that how brands are behaving will affect their decision to give them business in the future. And this is an interesting one. 48% uh, of people stated that they would lose trust in a brand that ignores what was happening. Um, and that actually might not be that the brand is doing it intentionally. It's just their tone of voice or their content might not be conveying that they do. They have accepted the reality of what's happening. Um, and then the final one is a, is a really important one is 25% would actually go as far as boycotting a brand that ignores what's going on. What was this percentage there, Lee? Um, 25%. That was a representative study of, I think, about 3,000 people. Um, but what that really tells us is that at the moment, people are really sensitive to the message that brands and businesses are putting out. Um, and they want to see brands taking responsibility and um, you know showing a concern about the situation and actually what's also important because what that those stats might scare business owners but probably if there's one worst thing businesses could do that would probably be to remain silent um, and that will bring me on quite nicely i think to our our first slide um, can I ask a question, Lee? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because this is all, you know, this is all really good stuff and, and, and stuff that I've just been observing because when it's all kicked off and when it became um, real in a sense that there were going to be some restrictions being put in place and people were going to be um, having to um, rethink how they were doing business and... and um, and again, there was a lot of uncertainties, as there still are, regarding the, the timeline of all of this. Yes. Um, I initially, you know, put out a, 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 a post, I think, on LinkedIn, where I just sort of said, you know, the, you know, this is a, perhaps an opportunity for us. And um, I didn't, you know, obviously showed a bit of concern. And then I kind of decided not long after that, after maybe a second post, when I started to see the traffic of stuff going on, which I found quite overwhelming, Aye. Um, I thought, no, this is about space because the, the people need time to adjust mentally to what's going on. Yeah. And they're not in a position to absorb stuff about 
what a business is doing or maybe people maybe being too fast to come in and try and sell their business or sell their their new products or whatever and I was including myself in that because we were trying to take stuff online yeah so you, you know you're right there and saying it's a, it's a sensitive period you know and, and people need time to adjust to all this stuff mentally before they're then coming back out looking back outward to say right okay what are what are these what are these brands doing? What are these companies doing? Am I ready to buy yet? Yeah, am I ready to you know to have confidence? Am I am I financially secure? Can I you know all these things are going through people's minds, and uh, yeah. I think I think I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of brands have got to be very careful when they communicate and how they communicate. Yeah, abs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think um, what what comes to mind for me there. Um, is something that we call social listening, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's that's really important just now. And actually, a lot of businesses and brands might not have heard of that term or have applied it to their marketing before. But now's a really good time to start. And what it really means, in its simplest term, is listening to your audience, um, and that starts with knowing who your audience are. Um, listening to what they're saying um, as a whole, as your audience, um, what pain points they're facing, what challenges they've got to overcome, how they're feeling, you know, are they fearful, are they panicked? Um, And then relating that, really absorbing that and taking the time to understand it and let it settle. Um, And then applying that to the, those learnings to the content that you put out. Um, and and really what that means is your content should never be um, produced to speak to your audience. It should more so be considered and produced to engage in a two-way conversation. Um, and the best, the best, because what we don't want businesses and brands to do is think that they can't put content out because actually I think it's a really big, it's a really big time of opportunity for brands and businesses to be heard and to be seen in a good light by their audience as, you know, um, contributing to the solutions and showing up and caring and adding value and being transparent. There's loads of amazing positives and we need to be careful that business owners don't give in to fear and just go silent. but I think the best way to judge the content you're putting out is by the engagement that it gets. So have a, you know, put out a post, make sure that it's carefully considered, um, that it's relevant, it's sensitive to the situation, potentially try and make it so that it adds value rather than it being too salesy. Um, And then just see what the responses are like. So just look at the engagement, are people commenting? Have you got angry faces on the reactions? And if you've got angry faces, then that's a real telltale sign that your content is just completely misjudged at the moment. Um, So I definitely wouldn't um, stop putting content out. You just need to pivot a little bit and really consider what goes out. Make sure it comes from the heart. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's good good insight. And, And this is where I guess, you know, it can be quite tricky at a time where people are being triggered um, into fearful thinking and anxiety is probably on the rise for a lot of people. Um, um, obviously that, you know, that, that generates stress and stress also about the practicalities of um, no income coming in, yeah. businesses not able to trade, um, you know the 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 a labour of love you've maybe spent many years building is now, you know, almost overnight has is 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 is, 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 is you know is, is is not able to 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 function, um, yeah. and all of these things will be really quite difficult for a lot of people. Um, and again, I, it's quite the the business as you know that I. I'm involved in is trying to support people to help them to become more resilient, to help them to um, transcend any kind of limitations of of thinking and feeling that may be holding people back in their lives. 
preventing them from realizing a bit more of their human potential and and um you know lots of spin-off benefits that come from the the, the, the stuff that, that we offer but um it almost feels like well it was relevant before this all happened and it's become even more relevant now because we've now in a situation that is forcing everybody into real really becoming present to, to what's going on and yeah. not being swept away in the narrative of the mind too much because that can take us into places that can just deepen the suffering so but it's but it's tricky because the, 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 the kind of stuff that, that, that I'm doing is not something that you sell to people it's something that you promote the benefits of but you don't go hard sell you don't say to people you know you should buy this because it's yes. it's about this is what you can get from it if you're ready to step into that then it's here for you the support is here for you so uh, but it is it is tricky you know I've really got to kind of think it through and say right is this right is that right is it what, what how are people going to perceive me for you know trying to support and we're trying to do as much free stuff as we can and we're reducing prices and we're doing all that stuff and i think um i think what's really interesting is um as a content producer so if you're producing content for uh, people to consume then it's really important i think what's really important just now is that you're creating the content from a place of a still mind um, I think if you're trying to rush content out, the the true the true underlying purpose of why you're putting that co content could get lost, and that's when your content can start to get mis misjudged. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd always say when you're writing content pieces, is try to do it when you're in your flow. So try to do it when you know. For me, that's first thing. That's I can really like content ideas come to me really easily when I'm out on my morning walk um, and then what I do is I come back I, I kind of type up the concept and then I leave it and then the next morning that's when I'll refine it and bring it into a piece of content and that's actually so this what you see on my screen that's how this piece of content formalized it was a two-step process it was let the ideas flow and um, let them settle and then refine them and put them out to the world um, so it's a, just a bit more consideration, a bit more time mm, yeah, um, to yeah. check your messaging. Yeah, yeah, it's wise for sure. Yeah, yeah, good. So let, yeah, let's. But, but thank you for that. Let's uh, uh, get back on track with the slides. Cool, no worries. Um, so we've actually covered a little, a little bit of this in our initial chat. So the first slide um, I've called "No Silence, Please," and that's um, what I was going to go on to explain is that. Probably the worst thing businesses could do just now is is just disappear from their clients' lives um, or their potential clients' lives. Um, I think brands and businesses and business owners play quite an important role in their what we call their core customers, like their smallest viable audience. That's the people who really care about your business and your brand. And I think what's really important just now is to actually show up for that audience um, and think deeply about how you can adapt or pivot to either solve a problem for them or um, provide provide them you know a, a message of confidence consistency support um, so really the best thing brands can do just now is show up for their customers and make sure that th they're remembered for something positive during this crisis um, and that's why we're saying you know adapt your marketing strategy to be more about building relationships keeping your customers engaged um, and I'll go on to explain that a wee bit a wee bit further um, but probably the final point of that is um, was a, a question that I posed to people and uh, that is what can you do for your audience right now that they'll remember forever um, and I think we're seeing loads of good examples of that um, in brands that we know you know Brewdog changing their production line to hand sanitizer um, all that sort of stuff all that sort of goodness um, and I think as business owners entrepreneurs freelancers um, I think what crisis does 
for us if we allow it to is it allows us to really raise our vibration and our creativity and innovative um, solutions. I think per like me personally, I've found this, this crisis so far, um, it's really, it's brought ideas to the surface that I've never had before. Um, and that's purely down because I've allowed them the space to come up and tried not to get stuck in fear or stress too much. Mm -hmm. um, but I think anyone listening to this within the group, I think will have some great ideas if they can just give, give them the space and the time to come up. I think they could present some great solutions to their customers, mm -hmm. um, either through the service they provide or the content that they produce. I think it's it's um, if it if it stimulates people to step into more altruistic acts and um, and do that in a way where um, you know it's not a kind of uh, got an agenda behind it, but it's purely just to to step in and be a leader and do something that feels like the right thing to do right now. Um, I think that's fantastic. I think when we look at the if we look at the, 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 the opposite end of the spectrum from that, it's the people that are maybe who have the resources but aren't doing anything. Yeah. So the big brands or the big owners that are sitting on fortunes and maybe looking for, you know, the state to bail to bail out companies and they're not prepared to put anything in themselves to try and do that. That's I think where we're going to see um we're going to see people who maybe we've held up in high regard in the past being kind of exposed unless they act in a way that is um, kind and caring and looking after people that have, you know, helped to create their, their, their successful businesses ultimately. Yeah, I think so. I think this situation, which, you know, a lot of us, well, none of us have really experienced before is going to unravel um, the true intentions behind the leaders that we look up to or don't look up to just now. Um, but I think you're right. There's a fine, there's definitely a fine line um, to be had um, in terms of, you know, are you doing it with pure intention or is there, you know, is there a, um, an underlying reason that you're, you're doing it? Um, but I've seen, so I've seen some, good examples and some bad examples um i think um i think a really important point and my friend laura taylor who runs a company called empowered by cloud mentioned it um is that people are quite fearful about um about selling just now and there's a lot of judgment and a lot of people calling out businesses that are continuing to trade um i think there's a few things that are important so we all need to be following government guidelines. That's super important. Um, but what's also important, I think, is that the, the economy needs to try and keep moving and businesses need to try and keep trading. Um, and I think, you know, shooting down a business that has adapted there, and I've seen this publicly, you know, so let's use Brewdog as an example. So they've adapted their production line and they're selling, they're producing hand sanitizers and selling them um, at market rate. So below, you know, they're not inflating prices, but they're giving priority to the NHS and frontline workers and all of that sort of stuff. And I, I think that's fine because we need, to, a business has overheads, they have costs, and uh, you know, someone like Brewdog could could still be trading because actually I think um, we I think Scotland has seen um, in terms of this quarter has seen a, a rise in sales of alcohol because people are you know people are at home so they're buying more um, so from a moral decision you know Brewdog could be actually scaling up their production of their their alcohol but they've made a decision to try and and help and we never like the question is is you know are they doing that for their brand or are they doing it before because they care and my gut feeling is a mixture of both mm. and i think that's okay mm. um yeah but it's a really interesting point i think there's um yeah there's going to be loads of different examples of of how that plays out over the next couple of months yeah absolutely yeah 
Um, Thank you for um, you know comment on that. It was not an easy question because it's uh, you know it is we're we're delving into the realms of um, you know human motivation and what's behind it. And and again, we don't always need to know that, do we? No. We don't always need to know if if it's if it's helping somebody and it's making a positive impact. Then yeah, then then fair enough. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think you're right. I think the other thing you've touched on there is that what, what, what's bringing into the, the picture here as well, you said that the sales of alcohol in Scotland have gone up as a result of this as well. And um, again, that, that's, a, that, that's highlighting something that's endemic across society in Scotland that is a, that is a disease, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and people will turn to that as a means of, you know, they've become cur- culturally um, enshrined in, 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 in the booze culture and therefore uh, it's the place where people turn to a lot to get a release from what's going on so I, I, on one hand I can really understand it and I don't judge um, I've been a drinker myself in the years gone by although I'm not now much um, but that doesn't mean that I you know I think it's wrong um, but I do think it's highlighting you know, for example, if we've got more people that are turning to that than turning to actually use this as an opportunity to actually evolve as a person yeah. and spiritually grow through this process, go inward more, deal with the stuff that's causing pain, go and try and take some time and space to look at that, heal heal um, dysfunctional family dynamics, heal relationships, all these kind of things that might be useful to, to, to do right now rather than just trying to continue uh, in what you were doing before and 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 blank it out yeah agreed agreed i think um i was speaking i was speaking earlier um on another call about about just from a marketing perspective how mindset is so important um and i was just sharing that like how excited i was about the potential that um this crisis has you know there's always a there's always an opposite effect like there's so much potential for people to look inward to grow to pivot to try something completely different to really challenge their beliefs and um, to be heard to be seen um, and my hope is that like more people actually do that and um, so this is why calls like this are so important in groups um, and that's actually answers a question for me from earlier that's why it's so important for businesses and organizations like you guys to be sharing content because in amongst all the doom and gloom and negativity, it's important that considered positive messages get to these people. Mm. Um, yeah, absolutely. Totally. absolutely. Sorry. Cool. Good, good, good chat. But yeah, back, back to the slides. Where are we? Number two. No here. worries. So zig where others zag. Um, so I was told this phrase, um, by uh, a business partner in my last business, which was a, a gym, a physical gym location. And one of his motives in life was zig where others sag. And it really, it's really stuck with me. Um, and in context, in relation to what's going on just now from a business and marketing perspective, um, I think it's really important to observe the content that people are putting out, observe the strategies and sales tactics that people are using and really use your critical thinking to make a judgment on what's right and what's wrong for you. Um, I've given an example there, um, you know, an email going out, and we see this quite a lot. We see, I mean, pre, I hate saying crisis, but pre-COVID-19 and isolation, um, we've seen a lot of businesses, um, and I talk about this quite a lot, um, kind of using unethical marketing um, and really it's really just uneducated and unthought through but like sending um, warm emails to cold audiences so you know they might have bought an email list somewhere and they send an email um, to a customer a prospect you know saying hi John how are you doing so like pretend actually you know setting the expectation that they know who that person is but actually it's someone who has no idea who that business is mm-hmm. so there's no value either way and i just gave an example of you know 
a, a business um, putting a strap line out that says book your holiday within the next 24 hours. Um, it's just lazy. It's insensitive. And people are just like, you know, people are smart. They're not dumb. They're going like they're going to be instantly turned off by that. Um, so what I'm challenging businesses to do is trying to look at the good examples um, and try and create their own unique content. Um, and I think the, at the core of that, it's challenging who your audience is and what you can do now to entertain, support, resonate with them, add value. Um, but just trying to, yeah, trying to go against the grain, um, try not to follow the crowd and and make sure that the content you're putting out is in line with who you are as a business and the tone of voice that you use. Um, yep. Yeah. Good. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll just move on to number three. So build, don't sell. Um, before I start this, I think it's important to say that just like before, some businesses are able to continue selling. Some are essential key businesses that need to keep selling. Um, so this statement that I've made is needs to be taken in context. Um, but I think generally, um, now is the time from a marketing and content perspective to be thinking how about how you can engage people and keep them stay visible on their feed, in their email, and their blog. Um, basically, we're we're in maintenance mode. So, as brands and businesses, if we can, if it's not possible for us to sell in an ethical way, um, then we need to be looking at how do we engage our existing audience, and how do we grow our audience. That's probably quite an important thing: is how do we reach a wider audience in an ethical way that's not going to damage our brand. So that when the time's right, we have the reach and we have the data and we have people that we can sell to. Um, I think that's a really important one. Um, I've just went into a little bit more of more detail there. But just as a side note, I think um, a lot of businesses overlook this, but um, it's probably worthwhile looking at your existing customers and making sure that you don't forget about them just now. Um, now is a really good time to nurture your existing relationships. I mean, as a marketing rule anyway, it's much cheaper to retain and maintain an existing client than it is to find a new client. So I'd be encouraging businesses to look at their existing customers and make sure that they feel cared for and also look as at is their potential to add value and potential to maybe increase revenue from that customer, if again, if it's ethical. Um, but I would also be looking not just at existing customers, but previous customers, um, previous leads, previous contacts, and looking at how you can re-engage them with great content and added value. Um, but I think it's all about added value. So I've given a couple of examples here. Um, so you know, how can you add value to, their, to your audience and how can you give them more than ever before? Um, I was on a, a Zoom call uh, in <laughs> the joys of home working in the bedroom uh, yesterday and I heard this noise from the living room and I came through and it was my fiance Rihanna doing a virtual PT session and she had got the personal trainer had asked her to get a bag and put all of my books inside it and use it as a weight so I came through and I just thought like that is fantastic you know and so the personal trainer Linda who's brilliant is helping our customers to get through this she's reduced our prices by 50% and she's thinking outside the box. Um, I, I just thought that was like such a simple but fantastic idea. 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye, um, and I've given another example there about restaurants. So you, restaurants and bars are really feeling the pinch just now because they just can't trade mm. um, at all. Um, so it's looking at, you know, what expertise, what knowledge do we hold within our restaurant and how can I push myself outside my comfort zone to add value? Um, and that could be, you know, doing home tut tutorials. Um, you know, what can we make with these three ingredients? What can we make with this ingredient? And that, that kind of plays into sustainability and making sure that we're not taking too much out of the supermarkets and putting them under pressure. And so there's loads of great stuff that, that people can be doing. Um, as a, a, a quick side note, um, just on this, how business owners can adapt, I think now is a really good time for thought leadership. Um, I, I all, when I'm speaking to my clients, and I think I've maybe mentioned this to you before, um, if, if you aren't ready to be the expert, then who is going to be the expert in your field? Um, and I think when I ask that question, I, say, I ask people if they're the experts, what I usually get is fear. I usually get a bit of, you know, some stuttering. They're not quite sure how they should answer that. But my, my response is always, if you're not ready to be the expert that your customers need, then someone is going to take that position. And it really should be, be you because the, what you give your customers is fantastic. And I think now is a really good opportunity to look at personal brand and thought leadership. Um, and asking a couple of questions, just, you know, how can you share your knowledge? Can that be video? Can it be written blog articles? Can it be webinars? Um, can you bring people together that have a common purpose or a common cause just now with things like these live videos? Um, can you give commentary on trends, on things that are happening in your industry? <clears throat> um, and if people are nervous and fearful about putting themselves on the pedestal as a mark and an industry expert, um, what I'm saying to people just now is I think what's what's going on in the world is is a bit of a reset. I think a lot of businesses are coming to a level level playing field, and um, there's a real opportunity for people who might be fearful um, and nervous that they you know kind of imposter syndrome, to push that to the side if they can and really step into who they've meant to be. Yeah, good advice, Lee, definitely. Um, time, to, time to dust off the, um, the old us and, 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 and step into the new without the, you know, without the fear holding us back. Um, yeah. You know, just believe that we can be that person and we can add value, I think, is the... Is the message I've heard from you there, and I would uh, I would certainly agree with that. Good stuff. Um, cool. I'll I'll keep moving if that's all right. I'll try and get us get us through these. Absolutely. Um, so point number four is know who you are. Um, and I think brands that really on a deep level know who they are and what role they play in their customers' lives are the ones that are going to have the best chance of getting through this and thriving. So not only surviving, but actually thriving. And what that starts with for me is an understanding of who your customers are. Um, not from a, a data perspective and, and if possible, not vague. Um, so we're not, what I mean by that is I'm not really meaning, you know, are your customers uh, female and based in Edinburgh? What I'm actually meaning is starting to look at your customers in a lot more granular detail. So we can start with demographics. So who are they? Where are they? Uh, what age are they? What gender are they? But we need to delve a bit deeper. What are their pain points? What are their hopes, fears, dreams, ambitions? Um, and how how do we how do we position our service offering and what roles do we play in their life that can help them be better versions of themselves? And I think that's that's really an important part. And once we know who the customers are, 
we can start to match that up. And this is what we call product market fit. So we can start to ma match up who the customer is with what the brand is. And I've, I've mentioned a couple of um, questions here, but what is your tone of voice? You know, is it playful? Is it serious? Is it educational? Um, really get to know what your tone of voice is because more now than ever, people are going to, People are going to call you out if your tone of voice isn't real. Um, so that's really important. Why do your customers buy from you? Who are your customers? What pain points do they do they solve? Um, and what role do you play? Um, so are you the supportive, local, trusted expert? Are you customer centric, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, I'm just going to explain a little bit about a term we call micro targeting. Um, what that really is um, is people, brands, businesses. We get um, we get caught up in vanity metrics. So how many? You know, we want more followers. We want more page likes. We want a thousand people to follow our blog, or ten thousand, or you know, there's no point in having an Instagram feed if we didn't have ten million followers. Um, but actually, we teach the opposite, and it's all about finding your smallest viable audience. So really delving into the core customers that care about what you've got to offer. Um, and once you know who those core customers are, you can create content that speaks directly to them. And actually what you want is you want your content only to speak to that audience. If, um, if your content tries to speak to everyone, it speaks to no one. Um, and you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. And what's really good about micro-targeting is it actually starts to show you how, like, that you're not too far away from getting the results that you want to get. And I'll give an example of that. So we work with a travel brand, um, luxury camper van business. Um, very sensitive for them just now because... Um, the government actually um, mentioned probably a couple of weeks ago that people were driving up to the Highlands and you know trying to isolate up there and putting pressure on the NHS. So our client, you know, by government guidelines, actually ahead of the guidelines, decided to stop trading. And our job then was to change their content strategy to be totally suitable to the current situation. And one of the things we've done is we had an Easter blog planned about how people could travel Scotland at Easter with their families. And we completely rewrote that to be focused on how people can um, basically uh, look after their kids and families at home and have activities that they can do um, without needing to buy things in, without needing to leave the house, that sort of stuff. Good. And, and that blog, um, I think it, the, the, it resulted in, I think, about 150 page visits to the website. But, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but actually like 150 um, targeted visits to the site. Someone who's read a piece of content and actually enjoyed it and decided to mm. visit the site and mm. read more um, is what we would call the smallest viable audience that really cares about what you've got to put out. Yep. So I would encourage businesses to start putting out content um, and installing like really technical but simple things like Google Analytics and looking at it every now and then. So whenever you write a blog article, um, go on to your Google Analytics account and actually see how many people have came to your site to read the blog because that will be a really good indicator of what content you should be producing more of. Mm -hmm. um, so let the data let the data steer your decisions. Yeah, yeah, good, um, good, yeah, good insight, Lee. Good insight. No worries. I think the other thing to throw into the mix there as well is is um, is, is is how we can um, how we can add value to people in a way that um, is showing them alternatives, I guess, to 
to um, you know to 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 maybe what what's been done in the past. And I'm even thinking about let's say at this time we've got we don't know what the trajectory of this is, right? Um, so is this an opportunity for people to collaborate, communities to collaborate together, um, um, who can still talk to one another without breaching any guidelines? Um, and stay connected with each other, but also maybe there are people maybe who are maybe in a position to 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 grow food in their in their property. People can grow food because they've got a garden maybe that would be feasible to do that in. And could the other members of the community contribute to that in some way if somebody was happy to you know to allow a part of their garden to be used for that purpose? But the whole community could you know feed into that process. This is just me just thinking of things off the top of my head, how communities can start to support one another with more sustainable action. And and almost looking ahead to say, well, if communities can become more self-sustainable, even for sort of basic produce, then that in itself could be a good opportunity right now because we can still maybe, um, we could still maybe buy in certain things I would I don't I mean I don't again I don't know if garden centers and things like that are closing staying open or whatever but I would imagine we'd be able to people would be able to buy seeds and things online and I'm saying that because I'm but I'm, but I'm not an expert but I'm just saying stuff like that I'm talking more about how individuals can be more dynamic and 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 try and try and shape change that can create more sustainability Aye, absolutely. Um, that struck a chord with me. So um, I was out a walk this morning and for the past week I've been trying my best to, um, I've always been pretty rubbish at this, but I've been trying to practice gratitude. Mm. Um, and the the f- really fun thing is I can actually go a walk and there's no much people out. Um, so I went a walk this morning and I was able to pretty much shout chant my gratitude um without being class deemed as a weirdo which was quite good um but one of the things i spoke and i try to remind myself of is that like i'm quite small and insignificant in relation to the the universe but what i chanted out this morning is that i'm grateful that even though i'm small and insignificant is that collectively with other individuals i can actually start to make an impact and I think now is now is you, you'll be feeling this. I know you will be, and loads of people in your community will be feeling it. But these sort of initiatives, um, there's never been a better time to get them off the ground and to do to do good in my eyes, anyway. Um, so now now is the time to do these sort of things. Absolutely, indeed. I, um, exciting. Not, yeah, good. Um, so I, me, I think that this is keep going. Obviously, we're going to take this right through to the end, the final slide. But I'm sure this is going to be very, very useful for a lot of people. I'm picking up a lot of stuff myself as you're talking through it, Lee. So, keep please keep going. Cool. Um, so this actually, you kind of set the scene quite perfectly. So bring a project to life. I think that can be commercially, and it can also be personally. Uh, I think with a lot more time being freed up, um, business owners. Are, have the time and have the ability to reflect and actually look at the other areas of their life that they've neglected for so long. Um, I've certainly been feeling that, um, you know, the ability to, I, I've never spoke to my family as much as I have during this lockdown on Zoom, you know, I've, for the first time ever, I've spoke to my family. So like, I think when I speak about projects, I'm speaking collectively, um, both individually and for and commercially. Yeah. Um, but what we've been noticing is we went through a period of two weeks there. Um, I think it was starting from like the 23rd potentially, um, where kind of people were shocked. Um, business owners were shocked. They started to make some really quick short-term decisions. You know, um, unfortunately, getting rid of staff, um, you know, cutting all their overheads. There was a big a big period of kind of shock and panic. What we found is that over the most recent two or week um, and a half is people have started to accept the reality um, and they've started to do a bit more forward planning. And I think what that's presented to people is the opportunity to look at projects that they've had on the back burner um, that they could potentially bring to life that might be enough to shift the needle of success in their favor. 
And that might be a project that they've shelved previously, or it might actually be a complete pivot. So it might be that they've had the time to really sit down and think that perhaps as an example, their product market fit isn't quite right. And they've unnecessarily been kind of fighting an uphill battle. Um, now is the time to maybe think about that a bit deeper and say, could I diversify? Could I look at what's going on in the current marketplace um, in terms of could I diversify and add some value um, and also set up my business or organization for success once this passes? Um, I think I potentially, yeah, I've got, I'm just looking at slide two on this. Um, and the final point on that was just to say that I think the leaders that grow rather than sh shrink in this climate are the ones that are going to thrive in the new normal. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I just reiterate, that is why all of the goodness that is showing up, that you're sharing, that other people are sharing, is just so important so that people don't get drawn or dragged into the negativity um, because it's so easy to do so. Um, and I, I actually feel a bit guilty, but like I, the past two weeks, I've not looked at the news once. Um, and I was shocked when I looked Likewise. at the news. Say that again. Likewise. Aye, and I, actually, I, was, I was a bit shocked when I switch it, switched it on the other day and I seen that how quickly the deaths had risen. Um, but and I'm, sw I'm switching on the news every now and then because I need to because I need to keep our clients informed with what they can post. Mm -hmm. um, but I could quite easily get consumed with that. Mm -hmm. um, and it would take me away from all of the goodness. Mm -hmm. My energy to come on this call and speak to you and share insights would just be drained from me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I, my suggestion is find some headspace, get into your flow, your creative state, and give those ideas some space to breathe. Mm. Um, and the possibilities and opportunities are endless if you do that. Yeah. One thing just to add in there as well, Lee, about the, uh, about the news and about the content that they share and about the death toll and all this kind of stuff. My, my advice to people who are tuning in for this is not to, not to believe everything you're being told. Do not immediately jump on top of figures that are being provided when you don't know where these figures are coming from. You don't know how they've been derived. You don't know what other underlying um, scenarios were going on for the individuals who have sadly um, are not with us anymore. Um, so I urge people to be very, very cautious about making assumptions. What I've learned over many, many years of absorbing information from different sources is that the more that we make assumptions of belief and perception from certain places we we can become controlled by these same um, sources of information and I for one do not believe anything I'm told unless it comes with some kind of um, factual and reliable and trustworthy source that underpins it and um, so I, I, I urge people who are tuning in just to, to maybe do the same um, and yeah. uh, and keep a very open mind and not let anything go in there as fact until you've done your homework. I agree definitely um, and uh, so yeah so I'll, I'll move on to the the final point um, just as important as all of actually probably in my eyes one of the most important ones and that's to be human um i think more now than ever brands i've said need to but have an opportunity to show vulnerability and transparency um like i said in my stats from that survey at the start um consumers that like consumers are going to really pick up on if a brand is just completely ignoring the situation um, and pretending that everything is rosy and everything's fine um, it's just fake 
and it's it's profiteering and it's it's just pure commercial there's no there's no there's just no human connection there with our customers at all um i think being vulnerable and transparent is the biggest strength that brands and people can show ever but definitely at the moment um and it's definitely not business as usual um i think brands need to to pivot adjust their message accord accordingly just everything we've said um, but I think at the core of it is customers need to relate to you so they need to they need to believe you they need to see your emotion they need to see that you're doing your part you're a good human um, and relating back to what I spoke about earlier about understanding your audience um, they need to understand that they're not just a number to you that they're a they're a human being with a heart, a mind, a soul, um, and that you truly care about how they are. Um, so my question to businesses, and it is such an important question, if businesses are to really see through this this um, this tough time, and that's how can you help your customers navigate the crisis? Um, how can you give out? value support um help advice time not only to your customers but to your suppliers because i think that's really important um to your suppliers to your staff to your all the stakeholders in your business how can you help them navigate the crisis and i really believe that if you give that out it'll come back um, and collectively the good businesses with good humans who care will really thrive. Fabulous. It's a great, great way to finish up, Lee. Um, I think it's been very, very engaging and a lot of really good, um, really good content and insight for people. And just for anybody that wants to, may want to reach out to you after this, if they've got any marketing related um, requirements or questions, um, I take it, do they just go and find you at Outlaw Social on your website? Yeah, so it's just um, www.outlawsocial.co.uk um, and my email address is lee at outlawsocial.co.uk Fabulous, that's great. Well, I'll get this up in the group later. Um, you know, I, I, may, I may circulate it more widely um, um, into the Mindful Enterprise page as well, uh, because I feel that this information could do with getting out there to, to more people. So um, I'll, uh, I'll arrange that when I get a moment later. Um, and um, yeah, keep in touch, um, keep going, keep doing the great work that you're doing. And um, I, I think that uh, at some point in the not too distant future, when all the, all the kind of dust settles and a bit more clarity emerges, then um, I'll probably be coming back to have a conversation with you myself. Not a problem, Gary. It's been a been a pleasure. Been a great catch up. Great stuff. Thank you, Lee. Take care. All right. Speak, Speak soon. soon. Bye bye. See you, buddy.